Welcome to our open day live Q&A session for the Faculty of Arts and Social Science. I'm Angelique Dreyer. I'm the Marketing and Communications Person for the Faculty of Arts. And with me today, we have Fiona Van Kerwell, who is the Project manage Manager for Wordfierce. And she also does recruitment for the faculty. And we also have Cole de Verlius, who is a master's student and he completed a BA in Development and Environment with the Faculty of Arts and Social Science. So today we've got a couple of questions coming through from you and we're going to kick off and begin. You ready? As ready as can be. Okay, let's go. Okay. Okay, we don't seem to have any questions coming through. All right. So... Fiona, perhaps you could just kick off by telling our students when, ca when do applications open and how can they apply? Okay, well, I'm very glad to have this moment this morning to have a chat with all of you, uh, prospective students. Remember, applications open on the 3rd of April. Not today. Today is the 1st of April. No April Fool's Day. Mm -hmm. uh, applications open 3rd of April. You go on the website of the university and you start your application process. If you need any assistance, feel free to contact us. There will be uh, contact details available. And if not, you heard our names, you can ask for us. And we're looking forward to those applications. Um, Cole, uh, do you want to say something when you applied for the first time? I remember when I applied in 2017, it, it was a lot different to how I applied for my honours and my master's. So okay. um, it's a lot more streamlined now and it's a lot easier to apply for. So there's less hassles and it's just a matter of clicking and selecting your options and then just uploading your files and then you all set and then just wait for university to send a response. So it takes about a good month and a half. Um, but because the university gets a lot of applications, so it does take a while to get a response, but uh, it's well worth the wait to get a response from them. Fantastic. And, uh, and a, a very important thing that Cole mentioned there is the uploading of your documents. Please make sure that everything is in place because if it is an incomplete um, application, it will not be considered contact the people, contact the, the um, information center and make sure that everything is there. And as he mentioned, tick, 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 make sure that you tick. I think there's a, a little button that becomes green and then you know, good to go. Okay. Fantastic, thank you. So the next question as well is about the human resource program. The question is specifically, could you give us more information um, on the Faculty of HR, what is taught? So I think um, what is meant by this question is more related to the BA in Human Resource Management Program that is offered through the faculty. Um, so I think just from my side, what, what I can add in terms of answering what is taught, um, you will be doing industrial psychology, mm. um, psychology subjects as well, um, and with this program, you'll be equipped to go into the field of human resource management. Um, and I don't know if there's anything else that you'd like to add in terms of just understanding more it, about the program. Yes, it's a degree that is, a, it's an interfaculty degree, what mm -hmm. we call it that. So it is a, um, some of your pro programs are or subjects, because uh, you are still uh, learners, so your, some of your subjects, or we call it at university, your modules, mm -hmm. that will be within the faculty of arts and social sciences and then you will have some of your um, other subjects or modules within the faculty of economic and management science specifically as Andrew mentioned the industrial psychology yeah. and it does open a world of human resources you, you are with a degree like that you are a professional HR um, official yes thank you so much Fiona let me just see what what's next okay if i want to study psychology uh, would i have to list it as my second or third choice option in the application so this is relating to an old system of our application where you had to list specific programs in a certain order um, which is no longer valid at this stage 
Um, so currently students can apply um, for programs in any order, for any program in any order. Yeah, that's right. Yes, that's exactly as Andrew mentioned earlier mm -hmm. on. You had to say first choice, second choice, third choice. Now you only make a choice, and um, I think the the university, the different faculties will consider all the applications, not necessarily as a first choice or a second choice, um, in that regard. And remember, when you want to study psychology, you have to make sure in which um, degree program you will be able to do that um, subject or that young yeah, that module. Eh? Just make sure the faculty, uh, the psychology, uh, you can study in, in different degree programs but if you'd like to become a psychologist the best option would to consider like a BA in humanities and a BA in humanities as Provosti Ruud also always mentioned which is like this big basket and then you put in whatever um, you'd like to put in that will fit to to create something that you want to do with that degree so if you want to do the the BA uh, in Humanities with Psychology as a major, then you start off with it in your first year. You continue in your second year as well as in your final year and you keep your marks as high and good as possible and then you can be at like Cole, uh, for the, uh, you can apply for an honours degree in Psychology and eventually for your master's degree depending do you want to do research or a clinical psychologist. Thanks, Fiona. So, the next question is relating to the application as well. Uh, do I have to apply with my grade 11 results or my grade 12 results? Okay, do you want to go with that? <laughs> <Angie? laughs> sure, I can give this one a go. All right, so when you apply, it is of vital importance that you please apply with your final grade 11 results. Your application will be considered based on your final grade 11 results. So these results is used to provide you with a conditional acceptance offer. And once you've received a conditional acceptance offer, you will then need to accept that offer on, on the application portal or online. And thereafter, once your final grade 12 results are released, um, you will be considered for a final acceptance offer. So in essence, a conditional offer is based on your grade 11 results and your final offer is based on your final grade 12 results. Yes, and if I can maybe add, um, the reason for the grade 11 results is it gives the university uh, an idea of how you, how your performance, your academic performance is within a stretch of uh, one full academic year. Because remember, um, it's the, the March grade 12 marks are always good all the mark mark uh, march marks are very good but we need to see your academic your level of your academic performance over the stretch of one full academic year it makes a difference then you can see no this applicant uh, is really capable of doing very well academically yeah excellent thanks Fiona. next up is do i have to write nbts for arts and social science I, think I can answer that one. Great, fantastic. So back all the way back to many moons back, I had to sit for the NBT. Um, for select programs, you have to write the well. For all of the BAs, you have to write the qualitative uh, NBT, and then for select uh, BAs, you have to write both, which I think is the um, industrial psychology option, the human resource management, and I think also for the new data analytics option, you have to also sit for the. Uh, mathematics yes. NBT as well so yes you do have to write the NBT but for most of the BAs you just write the qualitative NBT but to consult the yearbook that they will indicate if you have to write both or just the one. Yes so fortunately there's, there's also been a lot of changes in our ad admissions process um, so at the moment um, generally speaking for, for arts and social science um, the NBT uh, assessment is not required. However, if you apply for um, any program in the Faculty of Law, it is absolutely um, necessary for you to write the NBTs. So the BA Law program 
that is specifically one within the arts and social science, related to the arts and social science faculty, um, that you will need to write the NBTs for. All right, thank you so much. Next, we have a question about um, do you offer programs in music? And yes, let's let's begin with that one <laughs> first, and then we'll move on to the next. Okay. Yeah. Oh, but of course, we are the faculty of arts and social sciences. So within the music department, you have uh, three different degrees or, or options. You uh, there's a BMUS that is a specialization program within music, and there's a BA in music. There's where you can add. You remember I told you about the basket. There is where music will be your your core. Um, uh, a module and then you can add some other subjects that you would also like to consider with your music say for instance you'd like to be a music and maths teacher and then you do that combination if possible and then there's of course also a, a degree in music technology and for those students who do not necessarily meet all the admission requirements they are diploma and certificate programs but that's specifically um, for students that uh, did not meet academic requirements and you have to uh, go through a, a process and remember when you apply for any uh, uh, degree program in music it's a selection course so you must uh, be able to also submit or, or be uh, available for auditions and all that other stuff but remember read thoroughly what the admission requirements is and if you're not sure contact us thanks Rihanna all right, next up is a question about graphic design. Uh, firstly, do we offer graphic design? And then the follow-up <coughs> question is one that we already touched on. Uh, do I need to write the NBTs for graphic design? So perhaps I can um, give this mm. one a go. So uh, we offer a BA, Visual Arts degree. Now, this degree has three streams, um, namely the Visual Communication Design, the fine arts and jewelry design so if you have an interest in graphic design it would be recommended for you to apply for the ba visual arts and the stream that you would choose is the visual communication design and for this program it is not required for you to write the nbts however you will be required to submit a portfolio and this portfolio um, will be due around September this year, on the 4th of September this year, and the faculty or the, the department um, will provide you with instructions on uh, what you need to include in that portfolio. So get your skills ready <laughs> to draft that portfolio, um, work hard throughout this year, um, and yeah, just give it a go and do do your best. Yeah, and if we can add something to that, remember on the 6th of May, we have our in-person open day. Mm -hmm. Then uh, Visual Arts will have a presentation and uh, exhibition and you can ask all your questions, even uh, the content of your portfolio and everything that you need to know. Thank you. Awesome. So we have another question that is related to the application process. And they're asking, please clarify which documents are needed um, for the application process. Um, so for the application, as we mentioned earlier, you will need to submit your grade 11 results. So this means that you just need to make sure that you upload your final grade 11 results to the application. Um, and that is all that you need to um, submit and just make sure that the application is in fact complete as Fiona mentioned earlier as well. Yes, and the signed document or the... Yes. yes, so once you've received a conditional acceptance offer and you've accepted that offer, you will also then at that point be required to sign a document and upload that document in order to accept the offer. So essentially then it's there are two documents mm -hmm. um, involved here, your grade 11 report and the signed contract which will come um, after you've been conditionally accepted. 
all right let's have a look at some of the next questions um, okay so this question is about um, what is the application process for applying for music technology or computer science so well essentially the application process for all programs is the same um, there is only one type of application process um, regardless of which programs you're applying for we also only have one closing date and one um, open application <laughs> Our applications are opening on the same date and closing on the same day for all programs I, I hope that answers uh, that um, is within the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences yes right? okay. yes all right um, sorry let me just see what is next okay so we do have a few questions that is not specifically related to the Faculty of Arts um, but here's one okay do you have um, film and media as part of your drama and theater studies course um, Fiona I'm not sure if you are able <laughs> to um, the, the, that one. the world of drama is not only in front of the cameras but also behind so there are yes. programs in all kind of media film radio uh, and also the the performing arts on the stage so there are modules with for um, film um, and uh, what was the other uh, media yeah film um, and media, media. yes and we definitely uh, have form and radio as uh, modules but obviously not from your first year there's a, a structured program and you will be able to make choices as you um, progress in your academic year and your academic years yes all right the next question is relating to psychology um, the student would like to know which programs uh, can she apply for in order to study psychology all right okay i don't know Cole, did you do psychology as an undergraduate i didn't no. take psychology in okay, undergrad okay. i did take geography but yes. i think fiona can iterate again yes. on psychology yes. yes the the psychology um, remember we said within the faculty of arts we have um our open degrees that would be the one in language and culture and um humanities and within your humanities you can choose your different um, subjects that you'd like to follow of which psychology can be one but if you are thinking of studying um, BA in social work then psychology is compulsory mm -hmm. if you'd like to do a uh, uh, it's a PPE degree then psychology might be added if the program permits it if you'd like to do a BA in language and culture you also have the option to do psychology but remember it's a language and culture structured pro program so if you choose that uh, uh, module or that subject just make sure it fits in um, and then there's different other programs where you can actually do psychology but I think uh, the one that's most chosen will be the BA Humanities yes. um, because it's it, it's yeah. It's, it, it fits in within that degree but in in some other also the BSc in sports science there's also a stream with psychology so these these different options even the BA in law the I think psychology yes. is also an yes. option yes absolutely thanks Fiona I think the most important thing um, as Fiona said it's it's about what is the goal with psychology are you aiming to become a psychologist uh, if so, you need to make sure that the program you apply for, um, you are able to do psychology up to third year level. And as Fiona said, you can do that in the BA Humanities program, the BA Language and Culture. Um, and as she said, there are other programs as well, the BA in Social Work, the BA in Human Resource Management, the BA Law. Um, these are programs that include psychology, but we can recommend the BA humanities um, so yeah let's see what's next 
Okay, if I would like to become a news reporter, <laughs> which course or program would you recommend? Oh, that's such a nice question. It all <laughs> depends what you want to report. Because journalism uh, at Stellenbosch University is a postgraduate program. So, for instance, say you'd like to be an investigative journalist, then you will go for a degree, uh, what we call the PPE, that's a political science, philosophy and economics, and then you can be the next... Um, investigative journalist mm -hmm. and even host your own program on TV. I'm thinking now of Freak Robinson who did that kind of work um, and nowadays with CakeNet um, or, or on TV you can see which kind of journalism is that. If you'd like to be in the world of arts you can you, you will specialize within that world of arts if you'd like to be uh, we will call that an also an arts journalist um, if you just like to be a news reporter for general stuff uh, language and culture is also always an option um, because you are going to need very specific language uh, uh, writing and reading skills when you like to become a journalist and also of course um, oral skills because you will have to interact with people and stuff but that is what you are what which you will be um educated in that you, that you will be trained to become the best journalist <laughs> possible <laughs> but it all depends eh? what do you want to uh, um, report about yeah. angelique i think i can also jump in here quickly yes. um with also climate change becoming a real matter um, the BA development environment is also a very good option to start your training as a, a climate change reporter and mm. so you can do your BA in development and environment and then continue on to doing your postgraduate uh, degree in journalism and then from there you become a qualified journalist or news reporter in climate change and mm. political affairs as well. And an informed one, that is very well, thank you. Yes, thank you, Carl. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right, the next question is about language. How does one go about doing a language course? Um, the learner is thinking of studying Afrikaans and Dutch. Okay, fantastic. You, um, we've, you, we've already told you about the BA in language and culture. That's one option. But uh, you can also do uh, your, your BA in humanities and also have language there, uh, Afrikaans and Dutch as a language. Um, so there are different other options. I think even if you'd like to do um, certain degrees, um, I'm thinking now in international studies, you can also do a language, even in if the degree uh, development um, you also had the option to do yes. a language, so it all once again it all depends what do you want to do with your with with your language. Um, Afrikaans and Dutch has different options. I know there's also a course um, language um, acquisition, uh, so that's also options within the department of Afrikaans and Dutch. But that is now if you are not in Afrikaans home language. Um, student and there's a actual and also within there is the translation department you can, that is options with your Afrikaans and Dutch and of course you can also become a journalist and or a teacher or a reporter or a lecturer mm. yes fantastic cool I think the next question is for you oh. <laughs> all right uh, the learner would like to know a bit more about what the BA and Environment Development and Environment um, program is about, and if if you can tell us a bit more about possible career options associated with that program. All right. So the Development Environment option is quite broad. So, in uh, from first year all the way up to third year, you have three options. So you can specialize in geography and public and development management, or geography and sociology, and then minoring in public and development management that it would entirely be dependent on your option but most of the the core contents of the degree focuses on geography with a focus on uh, politics and sort of just navigating that space but there's a great focus on geography and then from there onward you can obviously you know specialize in climate change reporting I'm also becoming a, a, a expert on it because the degree does open the door to starting on this also in geography or in public and development management or even sociology if you did take sociology all the way up to third year. So it is a very broad degree and it really opens doors to many 
uh, aspects like myself, I migrated from the arts and social sciences all the way into the Faculty of Economic and Management Sciences where I'm completing my Master's in Public and Development Management um, with a focus on human resource management, which I didn't realize, but um, it does open many, many doors for you and it really also again depends what your focus is. But if geography is really your passion and you enjoy writing and reading, then the development environment option is definitely one you should maybe consider. And remember the focus on, so, uh, on sustainability of our um of our planet and biodiversity and all the the um, the the ev evaluations that needs to be done before a person can even build anything anyway. That's all options with with that degree, and um, yeah, and also become a geography teacher because we need people to understand the world much better. Fantastic, great. The next question is about English and history. Uh, which BA degree should I choose if I have an interest in English and history? <coughs> Fiona, you, you touched on this a bit earlier, <laughs> yes. um, so maybe I can just reiterate if you would like. Um, no, so no we have two general programs, um, two general degrees. Um, as Fiona mentioned earlier, the BA in Humanities and the BA in Language and Culture. These are programs where you can choose from a list of, um, you know, social science subjects or modules such as um, history, political science, psychology, philosophy, sociology, anthropology, and so much more. And then you can also choose from a list of languages as well, such as English, um, Afrikaans, and even if you wanted to do uh, ancient studies which includes um, uh, Greek and Hebrew um, so there's there's quite a list for you to choose from um, within the BA humanities and the language and culture program so in both of these programs you would be able to do both English and history um, and then so those are our, our general degree programs and then you'll find the other programs that we offer is somewhat more specialized and they have a curriculum where you have compulsory subject as Cole mentioned earlier the BA development and environment is an example of a program that has a set curriculum um, with subjects like environmental studies, studies mm. public and development management and Etc. sociology as well Yes, yes, but English and history is also a very good combination in the um, international studies. A BA in international studies, that's yes. some of the subjects that you can do there. And of course, that opens also an international world to you. Yes. Thank you. All right. Um, okay, can you go into development and environment even though you didn't take geography in matric? I can answer that. <laughs> so the nicest thing about the development environment uh, degree program is that there is no requirement to have geography in matric. Uh, the first year course is very introductory, so they teach you the fundamentals of geography in first year, so in both semesters, with the first semester in a bit of human geography, and in the second semester they teach you the fundamentals of physical geography. So if you haven't taken geography in grade 12, they do teach you again. But it is very helpful to have some understanding in geography because then it just speeds up your understanding and then you can breeze through the first year modules very quickly and then it just, you know, have a nice effect later on in the second and third year modules because you already have the prerequisite or rather say the prior knowledge of geography. Prerequisite is not the correct word because it implies <laughs> that you must have had a understanding but uh, they do, it would be nice to have some prior knowledge of geography because it just helps you uh, navigate the, the first year modules quite nicely, but there is no expectation or no requirement for geography um, in first year. Yes. yes, and I'd just like to add, and Carl actually said you can breeze through your subjects, you have to study hard, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> yes. So I'd also just like to encourage you to browse through the um, online open day site, um, and within each department, um, you'll be able to find <coughs> loads more valuable yeah. information about each program that we're discussing, whether um, it's about geography or psychology or English, there's so much more um, for you to um, 
yeah, search through and find out on, on that particular website. Yes, and what I'd like to add uh, regarding our languages, remember we, we have, like Andrew mentioned, English and Afrikaans uh, and Dutch, but we also have African languages. Um, mm-hmm with some specific focus on languages that we speak yes. in South Africa and then we also have uh, foreign modern, modern languages um, there we will have French, German and Mandarin so these are, these are a, well, a, a liquor basket for you to choose from <laughs> okay? to, if you would like to whatever your choices would be also we have also sign languages at the university yes. we have yes. sign language as well so if you want to learn sign language there is also that option also through the acquisition method so if you want to start learning sign language there is that option for you as well through the BA humanities option as well yes. mm-hmm. so whether you have an interest in um, wanting to understand people a bit more or understand how society works or learn more about languages the arts and social science faculty is definitely the place for you or if you have more of a creative spirit you can join our arts um, department music drama Um, all these options are available um, to you right here so please have a look at the online open day site please also browse through our minimum admission requirements booklet Um, many of you have questions about our requirements but you will find all of them on the minimum admissions requirement booklet. So thank you so much to Cole and Fiona. Thank you so much for answering our questions and thank you for joining us. Um, We have come to the end of our session, but we look forward to seeing you join um, our Marty community. Thank you. And on the 6th of May. Yes, (laughs) (laughs) please join us at our on-campus open day on the 6th of May. See you there. Thank you, bye-bye.